Hello and welcome. I'm David Hoffman, and in this episode of Assembly Language 101, we are going to take a look at using labels in MPLAB. So, what is a label exactly? Well, let's find out. I have a stack of paper strips here, each of which has a different value from 1 cent to 25 cents on it. Now, as I lay these out on the table, they represent the actual monetary value printed on them. Okay. So let's replace the labels with the actual coin it represents. So if a label has one cent written on it, then I'll place a penny on it. And for a label with five cents, I'll place a nickel on it. And for a dime, 10 cents, and a quarter, 25 cents. So the labels in this example represent coins. And the same thing is true in assembly and labels there. Each label represents something else, and when the program is compiled, those labels get replaced with what they represent. Okay, so how do we make a label? Well, labels are created using the define command. So let's create a simple label that will represent a static value. To do this, we first type in the define command, then give the label a name, and finally give the label a value to represent. So this label is named my first label, and represents the value 10 in hexadecimal. We can also declare the value of the label in decimal and also in binary. When the compiler encounters the D in my label, my second label, it converts the value from decimal to hexadecimal. And this makes life easier for us since we don't have to convert every single value we use in the program. When the compiler encounters B in the label, my third label, it knows that the value is in binary. This is very useful when loading a value for a specific register, since we can see exactly which bits are on and which bits are off. Okay, let's use these labels in a program. I'll type in the following three commands in the main subroutine, and then compile. Now, when we look at the program memory, as you can see, each label was replaced with the value assigned to that label. So the move LW my first label was replaced with move LW 0x10. Pretty cool, huh? So you might be wondering why you should even bother with labels. Well, allow me to explain. When dealing with only a few lines of code, labels aren't of much use. But when you have hundreds or thousands of lines of code and you need to change a value, labels are a lifesaver. So let's see an example. Imagine we have a whole bunch of move LW 0x10 commands in our program, and they're scattered throughout the code. And then the moment comes when we decide that the value needs to be 15 in place of the 10. Without a label, you would have to go through every single command and change them manually. It's enough to drive a person mad. Now, if we take the same example, but replace the move LW 0x10 with move LW my underscore timer, and then define my underscore timer as a label with a value of 10, guess what? To change a hundred lines of code, we just need to change the 0x10 to 0x15 and we are done. Labels can do a lot more than just that. They can also represent a line of code. And hey, guess what? It's example time again. Let's set up some labels to represent a port on the micro along with a specific bit on the port. Wow, this is pretty darn cool. If we decide to use a different port for outport, we just need to change that one label. And if we decide to use a different bit on the port, we just need to change one label. Using labels can really save a whole mess of time. And it also makes reading the code a lot easier since labels actually spell out what the label represents. Okay, there's one more label trick I want to share with you, and that's having a label represent a line of code. So let's create a few more labels. Now, let's add those labels to our code section. Okay, let's compile and then take a look at the program memory. Now, isn't that neat? Wherever we had port bit on, we got bit set F port A bit zero. And port bit off gave us bit clear F port A zero. This, in essence, is a one-line macro that 
inserts code whenever the label port bit on or port bit off is encountered during the compile. Using labels in this manner is an amazing time saver. However, using a label that represents a line of code can also complicate reading the source files later, especially after you've been away from the code for weeks or months. So it's advised to use caution when defining labels that represent actual code. Labels are a powerful tool and should always be used in your code to define those values or commands that will be used frequently. I hope you found this episode interesting and be sure to check out these other episodes as well. Thanks for watching.